everyone, this is Rachel or Cladville Tan, and welcome to another project video. Today, we're going to be making over this Our Generation plastic horse. This horse is designed for an 18 inch doll, although I do believe it's a little bit too small for that. I really liked the jointing and it was about $3. So I really couldn't pass it up. I've been thinking about getting a horse for the dolls for quite a while and I thought this was a great opportunity. All I've done to it so far is scrub it very, very thoroughly in the shower and then leave it outside in the Phoenix sun to try to dry all the water that got inside it from washing it in the shower. I can't hear anything swishing, so I'm going to assume it's all dry now. I'll put the footage of what it looked like before I washed it up here. So next step is going to be painting. I'm thinking spray paint is the best option just because I think it'll bond to the plastic a lot better. Um, if you didn't have spray paint and you had a lot of time, you could do chalk paint for this, but the texture wouldn't be nearly as smooth. It just depends on what you have and what methods you want to use. Now before we paint it, we need to cut off the mane and the tail. The mane and the tail are not in particularly good shape. I've noticed that most doll horses I've come across don't have really high quality um, hair fiber. I'm planning on replacing them with wefts, which I've made off camera, but you guys can watch me attach them in. So I was thinking, now keep in mind, I've never made over a horse before, but I think our best option is gonna be to cut just as close to the head as we can and then when and then we're gonna paint it and then when I go attach the wefts at the end I'm just gonna stick them in with some you know put some glue in the crack here and just stick the weft in and I think it should stick so I'm gonna switch to a time-lapse to cut off the mane and tail The tail was a lot easier to just poke in, you know what I couldn't cut off. The neck, you can still see a little bit of it, but when I shove the weft in there that should help hide the rest. I'm going to go spray paint outside and once everything is done and dried, which will probably be in, you know, for me about two hours from now, but for you it'll only be a few seconds. I'll bring it back and we can start to talk about how we're going to do the detailing. Here's what our horse looks like now. I must say I really like the way it looks just all white. I think it could be a really fun idea if I was just going to be decorating like a room like a you know a living room or something um, just according to my own taste. I think it would be really cool to do like toys and spray paint them like solid white or like metallic colors so they look like statues. I, I think that would be really cool. I've seen some like Pinterest stuff and videos where people did that and it came out really nice. Now unfortunately the one thing I'm kind of sad about with this is the the spray paint was not very even. There were places where it came out like that and I'm not sure why. I did realize as I was using it that this spray paint was like from two years ago I think so there's a possibility it was just getting old but one of my goals with this project was to not buy anything new other than the horse um, and I had the spray paint around and I haven't needed to spray anything white for a long time obviously um, if it's been sitting around for two years so I wanted to use it up. 
So next step I want to do, I found this. This is one I've had around for a while. I think I've used it on a couple projects. It's a nice gray color. It's a light gray, so I think it'll go well with the white. One side is dry and I'm about to go to the other side. I thought I'd get the gray base coat stuff down before doing like the fun details like the hooves and the dirt on the hooves and the eyeballs. Um, I do think I might just do the mud on the hooves because I think it's going to look too confusing with black and brown on the hooves. It might not have enough of a color difference. Now, this is the part where I remind you guys that I've never made over a horse before, and this is also my first time using a tool like this. I typically use a brush. Um, should I have made over a horse as a trial run before doing one for a video? Probably. Should I have tried using a sponge on a stick before using it in a video? Probably. I'm not hating it, but also it looks nothing like I expected it would. It looks very like impressionistic to me. We're gonna move on to the other side and then um, the, black, the brown paint on the hooves and I think I'm gonna use watercolor pencils for the eyes because that's what I'm used to and I think it'll work well. Not sure how I feel it's definitely something here let me um, take you guys off of the tripod and I'll just pan the camera over it's definitely something um, didn't come out anything like I expected but I'm also not mad at it I'm really happy about the mane. The mane is probably my favorite part. I just used this ball of yarn, which I got for another project. This is one of the few balls of yarn I got new. It was at Michael's, I believe. It was something like, I think it was labeled as like being silk-like or something like that, but it is 100% polyester. And I just separated the strands and made a big weft and just shoved it into the crack in the neck with the blade of a scissors. There's a really important part of this video I almost forgot to include. I have this saddle set. I purchased this at actually the same vintage and antique store that I purchased the horse from, um, Brass Armadillo. There's a location, it's a little bit of a drive from me, but it's fairly easy to get to. I paid $7.50 for this. My original plan was to make a saddle and when I saw this I liked it enough that I was like you know what I'm not gonna make a saddle when this exists and I can get it for $7.50 We have four elements here. There's a horse blanket. I thought it might be just a saddle blanket but it is pretty full coverage so I think it's intended for like you know, keeping a horse warm. 
I have no idea what this is for. If anybody knows, please let me know. It's just like a tube with elastic on one end and a little um, snapped closure at the top. I have no idea what this is for. And then there's, of course, the saddle, which looks awesome. There's a little belt connected across the bottom and really, really big stirrups, which cracks me up. And then there is, of course, the halter. I think it goes like this and reins. So I, I probably won't be using the horse blanket and the little tube thingy, whatever it is. Um, because I do plan on using this horse in like a fantasy setting for photos and stuff like that. But I'll get the saddle and the halter on the horse and we'll see what it looks like. I'm embarrassed to say that even though I used to know how to put a, like, a halter on a real horse and like hitch it up to a buggy, I could not figure out that halter. I don't know if it's like for a style I'm not familiar with, um, or what, but okay. Um, I guess he's just not gonna wear one for now, just the saddle, which the saddle was the reason why I got the set anyway. I wasn't necessarily planning on using the halter, I just thought it would be fun to try it on. I'll put up some photos of him with the doll on his back. If you're not familiar with my content, I typically make videos about ball jointed dolls, art dolls, and miniatures with occasional videos about fashion dolls and vintage dolls. If any of that is up your alley, be sure to check out some of my other videos and subscribe. If you already are familiar with my content, don't forget that I have a Facebook group. Anyone 13 years of age or older is welcome to join there and I post there whenever I put a video up on YouTube so that you guys can be informed of every video that I release. I also have a Patreon where you guys can support me for as little as $2 a month in exchange for seeing all of my content one to two weeks early and Every month, I give away one doll to a patron, and only patrons have access to that giveaway. So be sure to check that out and see if that's something you want to be a part of. Those who support me on the Fairy Godparent tier on Patreon, in addition to what I already mentioned, get a sticker sent to them every single month of one of my dolls, and a shout-out in every single YouTube video I make. So shout-out to Road Eret Fan, Tenor Girl, and my anonymous Fairy Godparents. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.